me again. I'm trying to do another video for those of you who are just coming into a and P. Um, just wanted to offer up some studying tips and what helped me during this semester. I just got my final grade um, and I'm very happy to report that I got an overall grade of an A and I'm very happy about that. Uh, finals were yesterday. Um, on Sunday, and I was one of those that was blessed enough to have a high enough score in the class to be able to drop the final, to drop some exam, and that's what I did, and so I'm very happy about that. Um, so let me apologize for the lighting in here, it's really bad, and it's making my camera even worse on my phone. Um, <clears throat> so I'm using my computer screen trying to get some type of lighting. And also excuse the mess in the back of my kids' playroom, and if you can see it, sorry. But anyway, so I just wanted to offer up some, some tips that help me in anatomy and physiology because it is very information dense, and there were a lot of times that there was just nothing. I like I couldn't, I just, I could not remember um, all of the information, and so these are things that I hope will help you. Um, for those of you who are going into anatomy and physiology this coming semester. So, let's start. Um, to begin with, mnemonics. Mnemonics will help, especially when it comes to bones and their articulations. For you, if you don't know what articulations are, it's where the bone meets another bone or what bones are touching that bone. Um, for articulations and originations, where the bone um, originates from. No, that's the muscle. Anyway, the articulations. Yeah, it's a lot of information to take in. Um, so what helped me was creating a chart. It looks something like this. I would list all of the names of the bones here. List it again up here. And if that bone joined with that bone above, I put a check mark. And just keep going all across. By the way, this is not correct. I'm just using an example. And then at the end here, I would total it up. So for the zygomatic bone, it would be um, two articulations, and then four for the next one. And that's how I would break it down to remember it. So I, in my head, I'd be like, which bones have two articulations? Like, zygomatic and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, remember it that way. Which ones are those? Or which, which articulations are those that meet with the zygomatic bone? So that's the way that I break it down for those bones that have a lot of articulations, you will find that there are a few. Um, for me, a lot meant over seven. So the ethmoid bone and the sphenoid bone. The sphenoid bone is the big bone in the middle of your skull that attaches to almost every bone in there. Um, so there are nine articulations for that bone. And so I made my own mnemonic for that. And it was Sorry, um, it probably doesn't make sense to you, but it helped me a lot. So use it if you want to, throw it out if you don't. Make up your own. Um, so mine was, <clears throat> every family owns poodles that pee. Zombies may vomit. I'm into zombies. I love Walking Dead. Sorry. But, uh, sorry, not sorry. But that helped me. So that's every ethmoid family frontal bones, occipital, poodles, parietal, that temporal, p, palatine, zombies, phycomatic, may, maxillary, vomit, vomer. Those are all the articulations for the sphenoid bone. So basically, bottom line, make up your own mnemonics because it will help you, especially with articulations and remembering the different bones. Uh, another mnemonic that was helpful was given to us by my teacher for the bones of the hand. Um, that was some lovers try positions that they can't handle. And that was some um, scaphoid um, lovers lunate try uh, triquetral, yeah, triquetral positions, pisiform, that trapezoid, trapezium, they, trapezoid, can't um, capitate, handle, hamate. 
So there you go. Um, some lovers try positions that they can't handle. And um, there was also a mnemonic for, that I found online at a lovely YouTube channel called Crash Course. They make all kinds of videos for anything that you want to know. I stumbled upon the anatomy and physiology playlist. And it was so informative. You guys go and check it out. Um, specifically for the integumentary system, there are layers of the epidermis that you need to remember. And they gave the mnemonic of, um, drawing a blank, really. <clears throat> Come, let's get sunburned. That was the mnemonic. So starting from the top layer all the way into the inner layer of the skin, it was uh, come, cornea, let's uh, lucidium, get granulosa, sun, yeah, sun, spinosum, burned, basali. So basali is the very inner layer, uh, corneum is the very outer layer. So that was helpful for me, hopefully for you too. Um, so another thing that you will find helpful is when it comes to remembering the bones and their originations and insertions. So that's where the bone, where, where the muscle originates from, and where it inserts at. There are so many muscles. I really encourage you to make a chart out of them. The muscles of the skull, the muscles of um, the abdominal, group them together and list sort of like this in a chart what those muscles are, originations and insertions. Um, my teacher actually did that for us and it really didn't help me. So what I would really advise is, <coughs> excuse me, flashcards for that. And I wish that I did that at that time. And <coughs> just group them together by where they are the muscles of the skull, the muscles of the abdominal, muscles of the legs, things like that. That's what I would really advise for that. As for resources, as I said, flashcards. Get some and get them different colored like this. Um, I got these at the last minute through Amazon and I wish I had them earlier on, but I was using Quizlet and I thought that would help me. But I have found that I'm a very visual person and I need to write it out if I'm going to remember it. So if you're the same and you're a kinesthetic learner, get these and write them out and uh, group them together by color, color code them. Um, another resource that I had bought was this book, um, Anatomy and Physiology Made Incredibly Visual. It really didn't help me at first, especially when it comes to the bones. Um, I mean, it didn't list out all the bones. It didn't list out all the muscles. It just gives you a very basic overview. Um, it doesn't break down or, you know, give you ways to remember <coughs> things like the muscles and articulations, things that your teacher might want you to know. That is um, the meninges that you will learn during the central nervous system um, <coughs> toward the end of the course. Um, so, but if you think that you will utilize it, go ahead. I encourage you to buy it. It does give you just a basic breakdown if you're having a problem understanding um, basically the formation of bone or, you know, the, the big overall um, big picture of things. It does do a good job of breaking down a few of those things. Another resource that I used was the Anatomy Coloring Book. I bought both of these on Amazon, by the way. I didn't really use this book other than for the bones. I needed to remember them. And it really did a trick for me. Um, they are just drawings of bones, by the way. So, you know, I just used it for that. It has the bones, it has, you know, anatomy of the ears, cells. And it's really, it's really a good book. I'll probably use it more in AMP too. But yeah, um, those were my resources. I rarely even use the book because my teacher provided a study guide and he said the tests are going to be on it, that study guide. If your teacher provides you with one, I advise you to break it down, use flashcards, and to really 
really understand those basic concepts. You draw, another thing that I advise is to make mind maps. Draw it out if you don't understand it. Uh, just draw it out, take notes, visual notes, however it is that you understand it. I advise you to do it. I would also recommend recording the lecture. Um, they really work for me because like I said, I'm visual and kinesthetic learner. Um, and so when I recorded it, I, I didn't really go back and listen to it again. But if you can learn through hearing, then that's great. Do that. Anyway, those are my tips for you. Hopefully they help some and give you an idea of, of what it is that you'll need to study. Um, so yeah, good luck. And I am on my way to anatomy and physiology too and microbiology this next coming semester in January. And I am taking a damn break. I'm not doing a thing but getting on the treadmill and just working out and taking care of catching up on reading and, you know spending a whole lot more time with my kids even though you know they didn't really miss out on anything because they studied at night but yeah um, hopefully uh, I get to see you guys or uh, talk to you guys again before the new years if I don't then have a great 2017 and thank you for watching bye <laughs>